Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Surprise, it's me doing a video. I know, I know. It's been a minute. You know, toddler mom life. He doesn't let me make videos. So he doesn't let me sit at my computer and edit. He doesn't let me sit at my computer and work at the job that pays me, but that is so besides the point. He is sleeping right now, so we are gonna strike while the iron is hot. I wanted to make this video because Adam and I touched on it in our podcast that just posted on Monday. The podcast is called Gritability for you guys that don't know. Welcome to Gritability. Adam and I did a podcast on our Gritability channel about the inmate that escaped in Pennsylvania prison. Adam talked about a couple of times that he was propositioned to plan escapes while he was inside. At least twice, one of the times he very much entertained. It's not as difficult as you would think. However, there are some major, major obstacles to overcome. So I will post a link to it in the cards, in the description box below. But then I figured, why don't I come back and do like a whole background story on this guy that escaped, how I feel about it, so we can have one of these sit down videos. Daniello Calvaconte is a Brazilian native. He's 34 years old. He escaped from a jail in Chester County, Pennsylvania on August 31st, 2023. This was about a week after he was sentenced to life for the murder of his girlfriend, Debra Brandeo. I don't know if I'm saying that right. They're both of Brazilian descent. Tonight, two days after this doorbell camera video showed escaped inmate Daniello Cavalcante on the run, police announced additional sightings within a two mile radius outside the Pennsylvania Chester County prison where the convicted killer escaped from Thursday morning. So here's the background story. Mr. Cavalcante was wanted for a murder in Brazil that happened back in 2017. Apparently, when he was in Brazil, he was kind of running with the street gangs. He was living basically a thug life. He did repairs on this man's car, and there was a debt that wasn't settled. He shot this man six times, stole his cell phone, and fled away in a car. In November of 2018, Mr. Cavalcante was given a public defender, but she never heard from him. The reason she never heard from him was because he fled to Puerto Rico. From Puerto Rico, he came over to the mainland of the United States. Shortly after he got here, he started dating Deborah. According to Deborah's sister, Cavalcante was very nice when they first started dating. He treated her very well. He was polite. She did mention, though, that he was very quiet, very introverted. He kind of observed the scene. You know, one of those people that just watches, doesn't say very much, but you could see that they're like taking it all in. There was no cause for alarm in the beginning. But then after a while, his dark side started coming out. So he got really jealous. He would go through her phone, make all kinds of accusations. When he drank, because he started drinking a lot, he became a totally different person. He got very dark. In December, Deborah filed a restraining order against him. And then all of this stuff about their relationship started becoming uncovered. There were times where he would scream at her, chase her out of the house. The two young kids would be there watching the whole thing. There was another time where he chased her around with a knife. That time she got away. Um, he did have some, uh, you know, two uh, prior incidents of domestic violence against her. She had, um, file, try to file for a restraining order, but unfortunately didn't go through because on the hearing day, uh, it snowed here in Pennsylvania, so she couldn't go to the court that day and he got dismissed. Um, but he was violent and one of those days she came home because uh, she was out with her sister and he bit her lip and she bled a lot and had to run to the neighbors. He tried to lock her up and everything. And then the second time, he actually grabbed the knife and said, I'm going to kill you. Unfortunately, in April, she wasn't as lucky. She found out about the murder in Brazil. There's different sides of this story. Some people are saying that she was kind of taunting him with it. Other people, a woman specifically who was a mother figure to her, was saying she came out and confronted about him about it to protect herself. She found out that he um, had another murder already in Brazil, and she tried to use that to protect herself uh, more than anything. She was just trying to um, tell him, like, don't do anything to me because otherwise I'm going to go to the police. And he he only used that against her at the, at the point um, where the day he murdered her. He just said, um, if you read me, I will kill you. And he did. On April 8th, 2021, Cavalcante stabbed Deborah 
over 38 times in front of her two young children. At the time, they were only four and seven. So now fast forward to August of 2023, he sentenced to a life sentence for the murder of Deborah. Now he's in the county jail. He's awaiting to be shipped off to prison. He escapes. The public is informed about it about a day later, but nobody knows how he escapes. They just know that he escaped. They started watching back the footage, you know, cause there's thousands of cameras all over the jails and they see him crab walk or they're calling crab walk up a wall. Moment, a convicted murderer escapes through the roof of a Pennsylvania prison's exercise yard. There you see Danilo Calvacante placing his hands and feet on the walls and shimmy right on up. Now, Adam, when he reviewed this, who's done majority of his life in prison, was like, that is a very flawed design in this county jail. He's the second person to escape this way. There was another guy a few months prior that escaped the same way. CNN reports it's the same way another inmate briefly broke out of the Chester County Prison in May. According to the warden, Cavalcante then pushed through razor wire, ran across a roof, and scaled a fence to escape. Authorities have been searching for the 34-year-old for a week now, last spotted Tuesday entering the woods on the east of the side of the growing search area. The only difference is that that guy climbed up the wall, and I'm sure you guys know, but if you don't, there's a watchtower with a manned, armed guard inside the watchtower. So as soon as the armed guard saw the man crab walking up the wall, you know, then they have to run across a roof. That's how this, the first guy tried to escape, but he called it in and they caught the guy within five minutes. Well, this time with Cavalcante, what they did was they installed razor wire when you get to the roof. And then, so he had to crab walk up the wall, somehow get through that razor wire, run across the roof and then get through more, like tons of razor wire. The person that was in the guard, guard tower, who by the way, has now since been fired, didn't see it, didn't call it in, nothing. Was it just somebody that was overtired? Cause I asked Adam, I'm like, how is that even a thing? He was like, a lot of times they're overworked. They maybe fall asleep on the job. Who knows? Maybe we don't think it was like an inside job because it just doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like he's gotten help at all, which is wild because of how long he's been gone for and how many times he's been cited and with different things he's been able to acquire. We'll get there. But anyway, so he gets through the razor wire, which also Adam has said is it's not like barbed wire that you see on the side of the highway. It is sharp razor wire that will cut you. He said the fact that he, he got out, he thought maybe he would be like extremely, extremely torn up, but he's on day 12 and he's running through the woods and all this stuff. So clearly he didn't get that hurt. I don't know how he did it. Miracle. Now, Adam said that a lot of times they'll do a rough count when inmates are coming in off of the yard. So he said what probably happened, this is speculation, but what probably happened is they were like, oh shit, <laughs> we're missing somebody. Let's do an actual count. Sometimes they'll be like, all right, come out of the bathroom, like stop playing around. Then they were like, oh shit, this is serious. He's on the run. They notify the public. The media says like, this is a very dangerous armed criminal. And they're in the very thick wooded part of Chester County, which is like Pennsylvania, um, Pennsylvania, which is by like Philadelphia, close to the border of Delaware, Westchester, Pennsylvania, that area. And they were like, be careful, this man is very dangerous. So those were the first couple of days. By day five, the weather was starting to get bad. It was gonna rain really hard. And Adam's like, that's actually working in, in his favor because I didn't know this until Adam told me, like the dogs can't pick up on a scent in the rain. There's noise. These are the pictures that captured the convicted killer. First walking northbound at 8.21 p.m. Then about an hour later at 9.33, walking southbound. Investigators immediately shifted their search to include the three mile radius around Longwood Gardens, now encompassing an area south of 926 and even south of Baltimore Pike. The pictures also revealed some important clues. The photos confirm that Cavalcante has not changed his appearance, but also that he has obtained a backpack, a duffel sling type pack, and a hooded sweatshirt. But the new sighting begs the question, how did he manage to get through the perimeter manned by hundreds of law enforcement agents? The state police touched on that today, saying the terrain seems to be helping the killer hide. Obviously, I wish we would have been able to capture him without him getting through that perimeter, 
but uh, but it is also not shocking. It's dark. It's a large area, and uh, not to make excuses, and it's it's just difficult terrain. As of yesterday, which was day eleven, he had stolen a dairy farm van. Um, somebody left the keys in it unlocked so he drove that about i think 30 miles away ditched it in a field they think because he ran out of gas he can't stop for gas because he's a wanted man now when he escaped prison he had like a beard goatee thing going on he had long crazy hair he showed up yesterday on two former co-worker ring co-workers ring doorbells so they said that they're neither of them were home but one person turned in the footage to the police they said he was like you know, you could tell he was desperate, but he was also polite. He had completely altered his appearance. He cut his hair. He shaved his face. He had on a, like, look like a neon green or a yellow hooded sweatshirt. He had a backpack. So he's acquiring stuff along the way. And now police say Cavalcante got out of the perimeter near Longwood Gardens. Sometime Saturday, stole a van from a nearby dairy farm and drove it up to the Phoenixville area. From there, police say he tried to get in contact with two former co-workers, showing up on one of the ring cameras looking completely different. Now the 34-year-old has a shaven face, and at that time when those ring camera photos were taken, he was wearing either a yellow or green hoodie with a black baseball cap. The van he was driving, well, it was found ditched in Glenmore after police say it ran out of gas. Since then, authorities focused their search in the northern Chester County area. We saw a large police presence overnight and today in the Glenmore area. A man actually came out and said that he heard Cavalcante in his basement. So the resident flickered his lights, his basement lights, and he said what freaked him and his, his wife out the most was that he flickered the lights back, like kind of like, I'm here. Local resident Ryan Drummond says he saw Cavalcante in his house on Friday. What I decided to do was flicker the light switch five times just to let him know that I knew that he was downstairs. And then he flicked the light back. That was the terrifying moment where I looked at my wife and I said, he's in the house, call 911. As of today, this morning when I woke up, like this is happening in real time. I was trying to wait to film this video to see if they captured him. If things happen while I edit this and they capture him, I'll come back and edit it in. But I wanted to get this out to you guys because I miss making videos and we talked about it. So I wanted to give you the background story. He went into somebody's garage and he stole a firearm. So now he is armed and very dangerous. In my opinion, I do not think this man is going to come out of this alive. Either they're gonna hone in on him and he's gonna unalive himself or they will unalive him as soon as they can. Now, according to Adam, he's like, they're gonna be pissed. <laughs> that was my jersey coming up. He's like, they're gonna be pissed because the longer this goes on, the longer he evades them, the stupider they feel he's making them look, which they're not. They're not at all, like they're working their tails off. He's just evading them. He's able to escape through the thick wooded area. Area. He's able to hide out. So they don't look stupid, but they feel stupid. And that's me putting words in people's mouths, but allegedly that's what he thinks. So by the time they capture him, they're gonna be pissed because the public has been in harm's way. They're telling people to shelter in place, but if people want to leave their houses, they're not being like held there by force. They're not gonna be arrested if they're on the road, but they're like, for your own safety, lock up your houses, lock up your cars, lock up your vehicles and shelter in place. A couple of schools, the first day, I think they canceled classes. Schools are back in session as of yesterday, but they were bringing outdoor activities inside. As of today, I think there was one school in the area where he was seen that they might have done like homeschool or something, but I didn't, I didn't really look into that that much more. Also two school districts have ended up canceling classes today because of this manhunt in the area. But the uh, police did say this. They say they have been keeping up the pressure on Cavalcante. That's one of the reasons that he moved. They say that's a sign that it's working. They're going to keep putting that pressure on until sometime he's caught. But we are in day six. We're going to stay on. Several school districts in the area are open and operating on normal schedules today in a letter posted online and on their websites. Phoenixville area schools and several schools in the Downingtown district are moving outdoor activities inside as this search continues. They're thinking potentially he might be traveling underground now. Unfortunately, there are a lot of circumstances. There are a lot of issues uh, associated with that property. Tunnels, 
with very large drainage ditches, things that could not be secured, you couple that with weather, aviation being down for a night. There are a number of reasons. Again, no excuses. And basically they say that they know that he's still within that area, like about a 30 mile radius of where he escaped. And they're not saying why, but they're saying they know. And they think that he's just trying to get back out of the country. Now, one thing I found very interesting is that they arrested his sister yesterday on an ICE detainer. What I think is that they don't want him to reach out to her. They don't want her to help him. But I think there might be some speculation that he tried to reach out to her, but that's what they're holding her on is like ICE deta detainer. His mother has, I think the media helped push this, but the mother has been begging him to turn himself in. This was as, as of like day, between day two and five, they were putting the media blast out and it was breaking my heart. It was in Portuguese. I couldn't understand it, but it broke my heart because I think that she knows this is the end, like the end of her son's life if he doesn't turn himself in. And I think even if he turns himself in, I, I don't, obviously for him to be running for what, on day 13, he's not turning himself in. But I think she knows how this is going to end. I think we all pretty much can figure out how this is going to end. And maybe that's what he wants. The only thing that I fear is that he's going to take people down with him. Like now that he's armed, he's killed two people already. You know, one was his girlfriend in front of her two kids. Clearly he is a very, very dangerous man. And I believe it will be nothing for him to take a hostage, do like that type of a situation. I just pray that he doesn't take anybody down with him. I think that if he does have an opportunity to get a knife or something and someone is around that he can use as hostage, he will try to. Uh, mm -hmm. And I do think that he may be very um, aggressive or you know, dangerous if they pick him up the wrong way. Um, and I would say uh, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, play with the not killing him or trying, you know, to talk to him into uh, getting out. I I believe that he can be dangerous. I don't think he's armed right now, but he really stabbed her 38 times with a small knife, like a kitchen knife. Yeah. And no, we listen, don't know if he, uh, I, pro he may have gotten I a half out. You know, I understand. Got in one already. And I'm very sorry. They started out with a $5,000 reward, upped it to, I think it was 10 and then 20. And the last I heard, it was at $25,000. They also said that anybody who is caught helping this guy will be charged to the fullest extent of the law. Yeah, that's right, Tom. And police say if they encounter Cavalcante and he's not actively surrendering, the use of deadly force has been authorized. His former roommate came out and was like, listen, if you guys need my help, I'll help you if you need somebody when you capture him to, you know, if it becomes some sort of negotiation type of situation, I'll be happy to be like your Portuguese translator. As the manhunt for Danilo Cavalcante enters its 11th night, we're hearing from his yeah. former roommate, Franco. Uh, I had no idea he, he could do something like this. He like said he was someone super shy, like really quiet. He would, have, he would drink his beers on the weekend, make barbecue, and working a lot. Franco says they lived together in King of Prussia for four months, and he showed us this video of Cavalcante moving out the day before he killed his ex-girlfriend in 2021. Right now I have anxiety because of this, and uh, I was getting anxious again this week. I even told my friends I'm not sleeping well. Franco says he provided information to police after the murder, and now he's trying to help them again. And I was talking to the police for about an hour. I'm here to see if they need my help to speak Portuguese, if he's found and I can talk to, in Portuguese with him, you know, so he can surrender. So there are citizens that are willing to come out and help. Other residents also showed up to the new search area Sunday afternoon to assist police. We're out looking for the fugitive. While others worry about where he'll go next. So he's out of the perimeter now and he can go anywhere. He could just keep popping in and out of different cars and moving on his way. So. It's a, I guess from their standpoint, it's a little bit different tracking him now. I just want him to be caught so I can sleep. I can go live my normal life. Uh, everybody can feel safe again. And yeah, he has to pay for what he did. Communities just outside the search zone are on edge. People don't know what to expect. You're on high alert. I'm not sure if our kids will be back in school tomorrow if they don't catch this guy by tomorrow. Today, state police reminded residents Scavalcante is extremely dangerous. He does not want to be caught. He has very little to lose at this point.
I'd love to know your thoughts on the situation. Let me know in the comments below. I love you guys so much. This was fun. I'm happy to be back. I feel kind of rusty, but you know, let me know in the comments what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.